This video lesson will introduce the concept of price controls in the markets for particular goods and services. We'll be talking about two different types of government price controls today. One will be a price ceiling and the other will be a price floor. The markets we'll be looking at will be the market for butter in Europe in which we'll examine the effects of a price floor on the price of butter in Europe and the market for petrol in China in which we'll examine the effects of a price ceiling in the market for petrol in China. Let's begin with the example of a price floor on the market for butter in Europe. We'll begin by defining price floor. A price floor is defined simply as a minimum price for a particular good established by the government at a level above the free market equilibrium price. Let's now look at the market for butter in Europe in which the European governments have imposed a price floor. We'll start by drawing our demand for butter curve which we'll assume is downward sloping and our supply of butter curve which we'll assume is upward sloping. We'll label our curves supply and demand and we'll identify the free market equilibrium price which occurs at the intersection of supply and demand as PE and QE. Now why would a government wish to impose a price floor first of all? A price floor is a minimum price set above equilibrium. This implies that a price floor is meant to help the producers of a good. A price floor in the market for butter could be set at any price above PE. Let's choose a price up here and we'll call that PF for the price floor. Now, as we learned in previous units, anything that increases the price of a good causes an increase in the quantity supplied of that good. And we can see that here as a movement along the supply curve. The higher price set by the government meant to help the producers of butter will cause the quantity supplied of butter to increase from QE to QS. Due to the high price of butter in Europe, European butter producers have an incentive to increase the quantity of butter that they supply. On the other hand, an increase in the price of butter has a different effect on the quantity demanded for butter. As we learned in previous units, there is an inverse relationship between the price of a particular good and the quantity that consumers will demand. For this reason, as the price of butter is raised from PE to PF, the quantity demanded falls from QE to a lower quantity of QD. The price of butter has increased, but at what cost? Of course, an increase in the price of butter caused an increase in the quantity supplied, but as we see, the quantity demanded decreased. Therefore, there is now what we call a surplus of butter. A surplus occurs when the quantity supplied of a good is greater than the quantity demanded for the good. There is now a price above the equilibrium of PE, and therefore we have a disequilibrium in the market for butter. Let's examine the effects that this price floor in the butter market has on consumers and producers of butter. We'll start with consumers. Let's assume that before the price floor, consumer surplus was the area below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price of PE. How was consumer surplus affected by the butter price floor? Of course, at a higher price and a lower quantity, not surprisingly, consumer surplus shrinks to a much smaller area. Consumers are enjoying a lower quantity of butter, but they're paying a higher price for it. The actual quantity demanded for butter is only QD now, whereas before the price floor it was QE. There will be less butter consumed in Europe due to the price floor. Next, let's talk about producer surplus. Before the price floor, at a price of PE, the producer surplus would have been represented by the blue triangle. Everything below the equilibrium price and above the supply curve. Now, it may seem that a higher price for butter would lead to an increase in the producer's surplus since producers are now selling their butter at a higher price. However, it's not necessarily clear that producer surplus will increase by as much as intuition says that it would. The reason for this is that the quantity actually sold of butter will only be QD. Therefore, our producer surplus area has to stop at QD. It cannot extend, as we may think, all the way out to QS. Since the quantity demanded is now lower, butter producers will sell a lower quantity and therefore the producer surplus will be the area I am coloring blue now. Everything below PF and above supply but stopping at the actual quantity demanded. There will be a surplus of butter meaning that everything from QS to QD will remain unsold 
and will eventually spoil or will have to be bought by the governments of Europe, which requires a subsidy in the butter market, which is actually a different lesson. So this begs the question, what is the net effect of the price floor in the market for butter? We should see very clearly, due to the price floor in the market for butter, there is a loss of total welfare equal to the purple triangle. Before the price floor, the combined areas of consumer and producer surplus was greater than after the price floor. There is a loss of welfare resulting from the price floor in the market for butter. So let's review the effects of the price floor in the market for butter. As we saw, there was a higher price for butter, which resulted in a lower quantity demanded and a higher quantity supplied. This, of course, implies that there is a surplus of butter. And the effect that, this, that the butter price floor has on consumers and producers is that there will be less consumer surplus or welfare and more producer surplus. But the net effect is that there is a deadweight loss, representing the misallocation of resources revolt resulting from the price floor in the market for butter. So because of the price floor, resources will be over allocated towards the production of butter and the quantity demanded will be lower, resulting in a surplus. Anytime there is a disequilibrium in the market for a particular good, we say that there is an inefficiency in that market. So the price floor in the market for butter leads to inefficiency and deadweight loss. Next, let's talk about a price ceiling. A price ceiling is defined as a maximum price for a particular good established by the government at a level below the free market equilibrium price. As we'll see, the purpose of a price ceiling is to help the consumers of a good rather than the producers. So let's look at the market for petrol in China to examine the effects of a price ceiling. We'll start with our downward sloping demand curve and our upward sloping supply curve. We'll label these S and D and we'll identify the free market equilibrium price for petrol in China of PE and the free market equilibrium quantity of QE. Now what happens if the government imposes a maximum price below equilibrium? Let's choose a price here and we'll call this PC for the price ceiling. It should be clear right away that at this lower price the quantity demanded of petrol in China will increase to QD while the lower price creates an incentive for petrol producers to reduce the quantity they supply from QE to QS. So not surprisingly we have a disequilibrium in the market for petrol. The quantity demanded now is greater than the quantity supplied which implies a shortage. So as we can see at this lower price than the free market equilibrium consumers will demand more petrol than will be available. There is a shortage in the market for petrol. A shortage occurs when the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied. Now, how do we evaluate the effects of this price ceiling on the total welfare in the market for petrol in China? To do so, we must examine the effects that it has on producer surplus and consumer surplus, and therefore total welfare in the market. Now, how much petrol will actually be produced in China following this price ceiling? Clearly, consumers wish to buy QD. However, due to the lower price, the actual quantity supplied will only be QS. So, before the price control, there was an area of consumer surplus equal to the yellow triangle. Consumers would have enjoyed a price of PE and a quantity of QE. However, the effect of the price control on consumer surplus will be that there will be a greater area of consumer surplus, but we cannot extend the triangle of consumer surplus all the way out to QD because QD will not actually be produced. The actual level of production will be only QS. Therefore, our area of consumer surplus is going to be represented by the yellow shape that I draw here. Everything below demand and above PC extending out to the actual quantity supplied. Consumers appear to be better off because those who can now buy petrol are enjoying a lower price of PC. However, what we must consider is that there is less petrol actually available to buy. Therefore, those who cannot buy petrol are not enjoying this low price of PC. There is a shortage equal to QD minus QS. This represents petrol consumers who are unable to buy petrol at the price of PC. Now, also, very predictably, the lower price of PC has a negative impact on producer surplus. Before the price control, producer surplus would have been everything above the supply curve and below the equilibrium price, represented by the blue triangle I've outlined here. But after the price control, the price is lower, therefore producer surplus is lower, everything below PC out to the actual quantity supplied and above supply. So producer surplus is now the blue triangle. The price ceiling reallocates welfare from producers of petrol to consumers of petrol, but the net effect on community surplus 
is negative overall. There will be a shortage of petrol, imp implying that the total welfare in the market for petrol is lower than it could be if the price were determined by the free market. So the purple triangle represents the welfare loss. So looking at our two graphs here, we should see very clearly the different effects of the different types of price controls. A price floor in the market for butter in Europe reallocates welfare from consumers to the producers of butter, but overall leads to a net loss of welfare equal to the purple triangle, since there is a surplus, meaning that resources are over allocated towards the production of butter. In the market for petrol in China, a price ceiling reallocates welfare from producers to consumers, since the consumers who are able to buy petrol enjoy a much lower price. However, total welfare is reduced by the area represented by the purple triangle. This, of course, represents the shortage that results from this price ceiling. There is an excess demand in the market for petrol as a result of the price ceiling. So let's summarize the effects of a price ceiling now on the market for petrol. A price ceiling will result in a lower price and therefore a higher quantity demanded and a lower quantity supplied. Of course the disequilibrium means that there is a shortage of petrol in China. There will be however more consumer surplus enjoyed only by those who are able to buy petrol. So we say that there is more consumer surplus but enjoyed by fewer consumers. Uh, next there is less producer surplus and overall there is a deadweight loss representing the misallocation of resources in the petrol market. Resources will be under allocated towards petrol due to this price ceiling. So here we see the effects of a price ceiling in a market for a particular good. Consumer surplus increases, producer surplus decreases, but overall there is a loss of welfare resulting from the misallocation of resources. So looking back at our graphs we can clearly see that consumers benefit from a price ceiling, producers benefit from a price floor, but in both cases there is a net loss of total welfare equal to the purple triangles. Therefore we say that price controls are inefficient due to the misallocation of resources that results from price controls.